They walked into a continent no human had ever seen before. A frozen world of predators, permafrost, flooded wetlands, and winds that cut bone. No horses, no oxen, no wheels, just families with children, firewood, tools, hides, and the brutal requirement to keep moving or die. But at White Sands, archaeologists found something that should not exist. Two parallel grooves carved into Ice Age mud beside human footprints. Not animal tracks. Not random erosion. A deliberate transport device. Engineered more than 22,000 years ago. Long before wheels existed anywhere on Earth. A vehicle created by people who weren't supposed to have the technology to build one. This discovery doesn't stretch the timeline. It snaps it. Because if these people were already inventing load-hauling machines, they weren't newcomers. They were innovators. If you're into history that rewrites itself, hit like and subscribe to Stone and Bone so you don't miss what comes next. Life in the Late Ice Age. America's was simple in theory and impossible in practice. The landscape was a mosaic of frozen plains, collapsing shorelines, mud flats, shallow lakes, and marshes that could swallow a person in seconds. Food moved with the seasons, water disappeared without warning. Campfires attracted predators. Staying too long in one place meant starving. Mobility wasn't a lifestyle, it was survival. But mobility has weight. Modern foragers can safely carry 25 to 35% of their body weight across long distances. An adult at this time needed to carry a stone toolkit, a hide cloak, fire starting gear, and at least some food. That's already close to the limit. Add a child, add firewood, add meat from a recent hunt or hides curing while walking, add a family's entire world. No human group could sustain cross-continental travel like that on their backs alone. Something had to give. And it did. In a way no one expected. White Sands is a strange place. Today, it's a blinding expanse of gypsum dunes, but 22,000 years ago, it was the muddy shoreline of a massive lake called Otero, a lake that behaved like a printing press for footprints. The mud here was thick with fine silts, gypsum crystals, evaporites, and salts. When pressure pushed into it, the surface collapsed like wet plaster. When dry winds returned, the sun baked these impressions into hardened crust then a thin sediment layer sealed them away. The lake bed essentially produced fossil footprints the same way a mold produces bronze. Shape, cast, preserve. Every step, every stumble, every drag mark. When researchers excavated the surface, they found human footprints preserved so clearly you could see toe flexion. But next to them was something far stranger, twin grooves, long, straight, parallel, running beside the prints for dozens of meters. They weren't animal trails, no deer, no camelid, no mammoth tracks matched the geometry. These were human-made, carved by something heavy, regular, and engineered. We weren't the first to cross this world, we were the first to shape it. And something huge was tracking them. Archaeologists didn't guess. They tested. They built replicas using hardwood poles, fiber lashings, and crossbars, a primitive travois. Two long poles tied together at one end, flaring outward at the other, designed to drag weight across the ground. When they pulled these frames over wet mud, the grooves matched the ancient ones down to the depth, width, spacing, and pattern of fluttering sediment pushed aside by the poles. Even the micro ridges left behind, tiny scallops in the mud, were identical. But here's the parts the competitor never explained. Dragging isn't just possible. It's efficient. In mud, snow, or famine, or wet sand, a drag frame can reduce energy expenditure by more than half compared to carrying the same load. A single adult can pull 60 to 120 kilograms on such terrain. That means a family could transport meat from a major kill, a sleeping child, firewood reserves, a hide shelter, and tools without collapsing under the weight. This wasn't a desperate hack. This was engineering. And it means these people weren't struggling to survive. They were mastering their environment. This is the part that flips the global timeline on its head. The oldest wheels, 5,000 to 6,000 years old in Europe and Mesopotamia. The earliest sled runners in Siberia or Scandinavia, maybe 8,000 years old. 
domesticated animals used for pulling? 7,000 to 10,000 years old, but this discovery, these drag marks, are 22,000 years old. They predate the wheel by 17,000 years. They predate known sleds by more than 13,000 years. They predate agriculture, pottery, metal, and even the bow. This is the earliest confirmed vehicular transport system anywhere on Earth. Not in the ancient Near East, not in the Old World, in the Ice Age Americas. That should not be possible. But the mud says it happened. And if you're finding this mind-blowing, drop a comment for Stone and Bone. What do you think these early migrants were hauling across this alien landscape? Archaeology rarely lets us meet Ice Age families so directly. But here, the footprints are so clear, we can infer height, weight, gait, and even moments of fatigue. Some prints show smaller stride lengths, likely adolescents helping adults. Some show pauses where the load dug deeper into the mud, suggesting someone shifted their weight or tightened the bindings. There are no dog prints beside them, ruling out animal assistance. These were pedestrian migrants, entire families on the move. From surrounding sites of similar age, we know their world. They hunted proboscideans, giant bison, and smaller game depending on season. Isotope data from comparable regions suggests a diet rich in freshwater resources during dry periods. Toolkits likely included flake scrapers, bifaces, bone needles, and hide working tools. They moved in small groups, probably 15 to 30 people, tight enough to cooperate, large enough to protect themselves. And now we know something else. They weren't just surviving, they were transporting. They understood materials, they understood loads, they understood landscapes. That means time, skill, experimentation. You don't invent a hauling device on day one in a new world. You invent it after years, maybe centuries, spent adapting to a place. For decades, the story of America's first settlers began at 13,000 years ago with the Clovis culture. That story is gone. White Sands alone pushes humans back 22,000 years. But the Travois isn't just another data point. It's cultural technology. Invention requires population stability. Innovation requires experimentation. Problem solving requires time. If Ice Age people were designing load hauling machines, they weren't newcomers. They were established. This lines up with the Beringian standstill model, so where humans may have lived isolated in Alaska for thousands of years before moving south. But these drag marks suggest something even bolder. People in the Americas might have arrived earlier than the footprints themselves, long enough to understand seasonal mud textures, long enough to perfect hauling frames, long enough to teach the next generation how to build them. When archaeology gives you behavior, not just presence, the timeline becomes deeper and far more mysterious. Firewood. You don't survive a glacial night without it. Fresh meat. Large kills spoil fast. You move it or lose it. Infants or toddlers. A cradle board lashed to a travoy is infinitely safer than carrying a child in your arms across sinking mud. Hides and shelter poles. You can't pack up a winter camp without them. Tools, cores, and flakes. Stone doesn't grow everywhere. Even trade goods, ochre, bone needles, cordage, carried across seasonal ranges. The Travois wasn't a luxury, it was survival multiplied. It allowed these people to travel farther, faster, and with more security than anyone imagined Ice Age migrants could. And it suggests organized labor. Adults dragging, teens scouting, mothers carrying infants while gear moved behind them. This wasn't chaos, it was logistics. Dating this site was controversial, but the science is now ironclad. Researchers used radiocarbon dating of rupia seeds trapped in the same layers as the footprints. Despite concerns about the reservoir effect, the dates clustered around 21,000 to 23,000 years ago. Optically stimulated luminescence, OSL, dating on quartz grains revealing when they last saw sunlight. The burial ages matched the radiocarbon timeline. Stratigraphy showing clear, undisturbed lake beds sealing the prints layer by layer saw no intrusion, no mixing. Pollen data reconstructing a cold glacial environment consistent with the dating. 
Multiple methods, same answer. These drag marks were made at the height of the last glacial maximum, during a world colder and harsher than we can easily imagine. This discovery forces us to rethink what Ice Age people were capable of. A transport device is not a simple tool. It's foresight. It's planning. It's engineering. Someone cut the poles. Someone shaped the crossbars. Someone lashed the joints. Someone taught the method. Someone improved it when it broke. That means knowledge passed from hand to hand, generation to generation. This was technology with memory. And this is what makes the discovery so dangerous to the old narrative. If you can build a Travois, you can build much more. We just haven't found it yet. If you're still watching, this is the moment to subscribe to Stone and Bone, because the next discoveries will be even stranger. The oldest vehicle humans ever built wasn't pulled by beasts. It wasn't shaped by wheels. It wasn't made by farmers or metal workers. It was built by hunter-gatherers on the edge of a vanished lake, dragging their world behind them across mud that remembered every step. Two poles. One idea. A simple machine that rewrites the beginning of human innovation in the Americas. Not as a story of late arrivals, but as a story of people who adapted faster, thought deeper, and engineered sooner than anyone believed. History isn't linear. It's full of tracks we just haven't uncovered yet. And at White Sands, those tracks finally surfaced. If this changed the way you see our past, like the video, share it, and subscribe to Stone and Bone. We're just getting started.